Hello and welcome to a new series of videos where I'm going to be helping some friends convert this Mercedes Sprinter van into a camper. The van belongs to some friends of ours who've already done lots of research and planned out in detail where everything is going to go and they've designed exactly how they want it to look. And Simon is going to be working on the project with me. Some of the work had already been started, some of the walls had been battened out and insulated, the flooring is in situ and some tongue and groove installed to the ceiling, although we might end up taking that down and replacing it as it hasn't been done to a good standard. A lot of the electrical work has been done and a water heater and ventilation already installed. The first job was to start panelling the walls and the designs called for horizontal grooves to give the effect of tongue and groove panelling. And for that we had some 5mm plywood and with it being so thin that means that A it's flexible enough to bend to the curvature of the internal walls of the van and B it's light in weight which is always a good consideration for van conversions. After peeling off those annoying stickers using a heat gun I used a story stick that I'd marked up earlier with 120mm spacing and transferred those marks all the way down the length of the plywood on both of the long sides. I can then line up my guide rail with each of the marks and make a cut about 1mm deep into the material. Having horizontal lines rather than vertical presented two challenges, the first being that I'm cutting across the grain here and it didn't always leave the cleanest of cuts on this poor quality DIY store plywood. It probably didn't help that these sheets had been stored in a cold garage for a few months. So we were getting tear out in some areas. In fact, in some areas, the face veneer was peeling even where we hadn't made any cuts. So I think poor quality plywood was the biggest factor here. And later on, we bought some better quality stuff from a local builder's merchant, which cut much cleaner. To get a cleaner cut though, we could have used a router and a V-groove bit, and that was actually the original plan. But the track saw is quicker, easier, and we also preferred the more minimal look of the cut lines. I gave each board a quick sanding just to remove any furry bits and by the time this has had a few coats of primer and paint, hopefully that tear out will be impossible to see. The second challenge with having horizontal grooves rather than vertical was getting the joins right between each sheet and making sure that the grooves all lined up. So vertical grooves would have worked better in my opinion. For the battens we're using some 12mm pine, again because it's lightweight, and we're fixing these through the insulation and into the metal ribs of the inside of the van. To fit these we had bought some self-tapping screws but unfortunately they were slightly too short for the job so we ended up drilling pilot holes with a 2.5mm countersink bit and then driving in just regular 30mm by 3.5mm wood screws into the pilot hole and that worked really well and gave a really secure fixing so we ended up doing that throughout the rest of the build wherever we needed to secure wood to metal. I took a rough measurement for the height I then cut a scrap piece of bendable plywood to that measurement just so that I can offer it up and see how it looked once it was curved to the right shape hard up against the battens and it looked good. I can then use that to mark up the height onto both sides of the plywood to not only this panel but also the rest of them because the height of the ceiling is one of the few things that is consistent in the back of the van. The first couple of panels needed a few cutouts to fit around things like the wheel arches and the water heater and these are going to be covered later. These cuts didn't need to be precise because they're going to be hidden behind cabinetry and other stuff later on so we just took some vague measurements and cut them out with a jigsaw. Yeah. Yeah. To secure the panels to the battens we used some 15mm brad nails and plenty of them. There were a few areas though where we needed to use screws to pull the panels in tight to the battens but all of the screw and nail holes will be filled later anyway. Here you'll see that we've added some small battens around the wheel arch just to give us something to fix the plywood to. Because we were limited to only being able to secure battens to the internal ribs inside the van, there were a few areas where there wasn't any support between where one panel would meet the next. So in this footage you'll see that I've cut out a scrap of thin plywood and used a combination of hot glue and wood glue to stick it to the back of the panel on the right hand side. We can then butt the next panel up to it and glue that in place too so that the two panels are fixed together. We're using the hot glue here purely just for speed as it dries within a few seconds and that'll hold it in place until the wood glue cures which will provide more strength. Another issue we had was that some of the factory edges of the ply were not perfectly straight, presumably because it had warped and twisted out of shape over time. So a few swipes with the block plane were needed here just to remove a bit of material right at the bottom in order to get the join nice and tight between the two sheets. And here we're marking up some pencil lines just to indicate where the centre of the battens are so that we know where to fire in the nails. 
open this up. Another issue that we kind of created for ourselves actually was that due to the large span between the ribs in the van that we could fit battens to either side of the large windows being roughly the width of a sheet of plywood we decided to place the first sheet centrally to the window so that we could get the window opening cut out of that single sheet but that meant that we had to make a really thin infill panel to fill the gap at the back which we did by scribing and templating this rather awkward shape measuring about 80 millimeters at its widest at the bottom and only about five millimeters at the top and with a few obstacles to work around too it took a few attempts at scribing and trimming to get a good fit but we got there in the end and once this is all sealed in later with some caulk and painted it should be okay but getting the face of that infill panel to sit perfectly flush with the window panel next to it from top to bottom was a real challenge. And the solution that we came up with was to use expanding spray foam adhesive, which we could spray in from behind in an effort to get them sitting flush. By the way, the cardboard here is just to stop it expanding onto the window. And this kind of worked, but it wasn't perfect. Fortunately though, most of that infill panel is going to be hidden later by cabinetry, but we learned from our mistakes, so when it came to panelling the large window on the opposite side of the van, what worked much better was to do the window in two wide panels. So we brought the first panel in and made sure that it was sitting square to the floor, and then I used my compass set to the widest gap, just to scribe the shape of that pillar at the back onto the ply. Here I'm just going around that pencil mark with a marker pen to make it easier to see, and then I cut it out with the jigsaw. Oh, mate. Come on. And so we could start securing that to the battens. And once we'd fitted the panel next to it and cut out the opening for the window, I glued and nailed on a batten on the inside just to secure the two panels together. And I can't even begin to explain how much of a better solution this was compared to what we had done on the other side of the van, but we live and learn. Here I'm using a hole saw bit to drill a hole so that we can bring through the electrical cables which later on in the project will be hidden inside a wall. This panel that I'm going to be installing over the window needed a simple straight cut with no curves or awkward cutouts. I carefully measured up the location of the window and made some notes. And this is a closer look of where we used that hot glue trick to join the two sheets together. I can then mark out the location of the window onto the panel using a framing square. And once it's marked up I measure from corner to corner to see if the measurements are the same and they were so I knew that it was square. I used the oscillating multi-tool to cut the first hole, pretty small just so that I can check that I've got the location right first. And then I can just keep making more cuts to creep up on it and get the perfect size window. Using some scraps of this 12mm plywood, which I'll be using later to make the window boxes, helps me to figure out where it's going to sit in relation to the window frame. I can then measure the distance between the panel and the window and then I can rip down some of that 12mm plywood at the table saw to that measurement. And then it's just a case of making a simple box to fit inside the window opening so I'm just cutting the pieces to length at the mitre saw and assembling first with glue and brad nails and then I can make sure it's square before adding the screws. I can make sure it fits and it's perfect. And I then rip down some three millimeter plywood into pieces that I can use to make a mitered frame trim for the window box. And those just got glued and nailed to the front edges of the box. So that was the first window and that was really quick and easy to do, it only took about an hour. The larger windows however were not so simple due to the curvature of the walls and the shape of the windows themselves. You'll see in this footage that the left hand side of the window is slanted at an angle, 
but the client wanted all of the window boxes to be square, so it would need to fit inside so that that angle couldn't be seen. So after measuring up, I ripped four pieces to make the box, but each piece was cut to different widths on the table saw based on those measurements. I can then assemble it in the same way as I did before, and I push it into the opening and once again I'm using my compass set to the maximum amount of material that needs removing to scribe the shape of the window to the inside of the window box. I make the necessary cuts with my multi-tool, and then it's more scribing and cutting. And I needed to do this on all four sides of the box to get it fitting right. There was a lot of back and forth making small adjustments and then test fitting over and over again. And then once it was sitting in there nicely, I then needed to scribe the outside edges of the shape of the curvature of the walls onto the window box. So I make those cuts with the jigsaw too, and then finally I can start adding the mitered trim, again using more of the 3mm plywood which is bendy enough to fit to that curvature. Once it's all assembled I give it a good sanding and then it fits really nicely. It'll look good once it's all primed and painted. And I had to do all of that twice because there are two of these larger windows. And at some point in the future we will be gluing these window boxes in place. The windows function as they did before with the opening and closing. On the outside of the van you'll see that the windows are blacked out so no one will see these window frames when looking in from the outside. Here's the final wall panel going in and this one needed a slit cut down the bottom so that we could fit the sheet around a cable that was already hardwired in place. This slit will be hidden later behind some of the kitchen cabinets so it won't be visible. And we could open the side door to enable us to use the shape of the door opening to scribe the shape of the edge. So far we've made some good progress and it took between four and five days in total to get all of the walls panelled and the windows fitted. This is pretty time consuming work but for me it's a new challenge, I'm learning a lot and it's been good fun. I hope you've enjoyed the video, there'll be links down below to the next parts in the series as soon as they are available. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos and if you'd like to help support the channel and get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and the name credit at the end of my videos, you can check out my YouTube channel membership or Patreon page, links down below in the description. Thanks for watching.